very recently, yeah. and, and seemingly only recently, has the government acknowledged the existence of UFOs. They're real. Yeah. And that is uh, objectively incredible. But what I find more incredible is the fact that when the government comes out and says UFOs are real, seemingly nobody cares. <laughs> like nothing, it, nothing changed. Like, 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 and uh, it's just like, just life goes on. Like I just, you know, now you're obviously a lot closer to it. And so I'm sure that like, a lot did change in your view but yeah. me being just a layman guy yeah. like sort of i just don't it, it's it's amazing to me i'm like how wait hold on a second does nobody care yeah and and i guess that's my first question is is that your experience that wow like i thought this was going to kind of make more of a splash than it did yeah uh no, I didn't think it would make more of a splash, you know. Uh, it, it is this kind of slow absorption process of what does that even mean. There's a lot to talk about what you just said. So the government acknowledged that UFOs are real. They call them UAP, um, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, because UFO was in lieu of flying saucer, which was originally kind of what everybody was calling them because it was misunderstood. A guy said when he saw it, Kenneth Arnold, Mount Rainier, this was 19... 1948, I believe. 47. I'm not good with dates. He said that it, it, it moved like a, if you took a saucer and skipped it on water. So the media was like, oh, flying saucer, right? But really, the craft weren't shaped at all like saucers, the ones that he saw. So what happened is we go into this term of UFO because it was better. It was unidentified flying object. Okay, great. But now we know they're under the water, they're in space, like this is documented. So Unidentified anomalous phenomena is the new government term. So when you say the government acknowledged, that is correct. Our government has said UFOs are real. They do fly with impunity within our restricted airspace. We don't know who made them. They appear, we don't know who operates them. And they appear to be able to do things that our own weapon systems can't. Our greatest fighter planes can't. The way, they the way they maneuver and stuff. So you're right. They've said UFOs are real. We're no closer to understanding what a UFO truly is, who operates them, where they're from, what's the intent, what they represent to humankind. So the public, in general, they see that shit on the news. It's like, okay, yeah, we all kind of thought that because we're seeing them. Thanks, government. Right. But nothing's really answered. Um. I think that from my perspective, um, changing the name from UFO to UAP, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, yep. uh, makes a lot of sense because, like, why would these things even assume uh, a physical form yeah. when they're, like, aren't they by definition interdimensional things? I don't know. See, that that's the thing. Now we're starting to get to the areas of like, what is a UFO? What does this whole phenomenon represent to humankind? Is it more than just machines or craft? So you just said interdimensional. Let me give you a few other theories people have. So okay. one is like interplanetary. So you're like extraterrestrial. So these are craft coming from other solar systems from within our galaxy or maybe beyond. Okay. Zeta Reticuli. Sure, the famous Zeta Reticuli <laughs> binary star system that Bob Lazar brought into the forefront through documents he read that he doesn't even know if it's true. Yes. <laughs> so you've got that idea, extraterrestrial. Then you have this one you said, which is interdimensional, which is like so interesting because I can't jokingly can't even live in this dimension. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to understand what that means. But right. the way it was described in Congress recently, which I'm sure we'll talk about, is like you can take a three-dimensional object, hold it up to a light, project a two-dimensional shadow against the wall, right? Kind of like Plato's cave, that allegory. Whatever. Sure. So when you see something that m might be of a higher dimension coming into existence in our dimensional reality, you're only seeing like a representation of it. It's like if you push an orange, a three-dimensional sphere through a two-dimensional plane, on that two-dimensional plane, people will just see a growing circle and then a fading circle. That's what they can perceive on that dimensional reality. Right. So when you say it's, it could be you know, extra-dimensional, that's some of the greatest scientists now who take this seriously believe it could be. So why would they even present 
themselves if they have this super stealth mode, these craft. Right. So let's go further than that. Right. That, I mean, that's the question. Is that like they don't? I, I would assume they don't have any need to uh, take a physical form to be perceivable by us. So it would like presumably be a choice that they appear when I would guess they don't have totally. To. So, but let's go a little further with that and other possibilities this could be. Because remember, the true architects of this secrecy, it's not your government, it's whoever the visitors are themselves, if they're in fact visitors and not from here originally, right? So whoever's operating these craft, if these are hard physical craft, they could reveal themselves. So there's an intent, but we just don't know what it is. So we've got interdimensional, extraterrestrial. Now there's one called extratemporal, which is... And the, sorry, extraterrestrial just by definition means not from Earth. Yeah, so not I can, from this world, from outside of the world. Yeah, so the, from somewhere else. Right. So the better would be non-terrestrial. Would be the way that I that I would say it. people say ET extraterrestrial. Yeah, it'd be non-terrestrial, right? That'd be a good one. So you got that extra-dimensional. Then you've got this idea of uh, extra-temporal. So the way that a lot of the scientists that I talk with who've been working on this problem for government and within private industry say these are gravitationally propelled. We don't know much. We don't know anything about gravity. We can observe its effects, but we don't know what it is or how to control it other than through mass. So they say this could be extra-temporal because when you shape gravity, it distorts time and space. So by definition, these craft are from another time. So you've got extra-temporal, extra-dimensional, extraterrestrial or non-terrestrial, then you have another theory, which is the idea that these have always been here and, and human beings are just kind of tuned in now to like sure. a breakaway civilization or some sort of other people that have been here before. They're from here. They've been here under the oceans, whatever, in Antarctica. That's another theory people like to, to put forward is that this is some sort of breakaway civilization that's been with us a long time. Then you keep going. You've got these ideas that this is some sort of simulation. So what we're seeing, what they're presenting are like craft just ahead of what we have now. So we can then have a learning process of trying to replicate as if it's a techno terrestrial. There's another one. <laughs> the idea that we're all evolving towards a technological goal with a little bit of assistance from others. And I, I love that one because there's a lot of evidence that UFOs are presented in their time in ways that those people can understand them. Back in the day... When you say those people, you're not talking about humans. No, I, 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 I was, those people of that time. So it's like in the 1800s, a lot of UFOs... Oh, okay, gotcha. They looked like... So those people in the 1800s, they saw UFOs oftentimes as kind of like dirigibles, you know, but there was none at the time, but that was a uh, technology about to come or just budding. So a lot of the UFO reports are these like Viking floatable ships with spotlights, which we had nothing like that at the time. But you got reports in multiple countries within that four or five year period where they're seeing that. And now we've got these craft that look interstellar. So you have to ask yourself, is the UFO phenomenon fucking with us? And are they presenting, whoever they are, something that we can relate to that's just outside of our grasp to help propel us forward like a control system to educate us hmm. or th they only tend to show up in areas where there's nuclear power and they're m watching us to make sure we don't fuck up the earth okay well let, let's get there because the Ooh. thing the thing is that there there is an influx at all times since we began the nuclear program since 1945 when we had the Trinity test site explosion of the first nuclear weapon. You had an in, UFOs existed before, but there's been a great interest, uh, a kind of increased frequency of activity surrounding our nuclear assets, including these detonizations. Now they haven't stopped any of them, but UFOs have come into nuclear sites, turned on and off nuclear missiles. A, a guy that lives close to me is a friend of mine, and he was part of that. He saw them go online, offline, as a red disc came in over the base. Now, George Knapp found out through documents that happened not only in the U.S. When he smuggled Russian UFO documents mm -hmm. back, it happened in, also in Russia. But it's not just like, hey, here's your matches. We're going to take them from you. They turned them fucking on, too. So that's a kind of flex, if you ask me. Okay. So, so the UFO thing, and also our United States government has what they call baited UFOs before. So on multiple occasions in the transit of nuclear weapons or bringing them out places, 
like clockwork, these things, whatever they are, show up. That's what I'm told and I understand the facts to be. So with that said... Okay, but help me with the baited part. Yeah, baited. So like uh, they were saying, to scientifically study UFOs, we have to have a repeatable process, right? You can't just be like, some guy saw one, some fighter pilot chased one. So you're saying that the United States government in uh, the interest of studying UFOs effectively said, troops, load up the nukes, we got to transport them so that it will uh, draw the, the UFOs so that we can study them. Well, they would never tell the troops that. But right. <laughs> yeah. they would right. Put that container in the, you know. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, so it is uh, understood by me, you know, take that for what, what it's worth. Um, my understanding is at this time, and I'm pretty damn confident with it, that uh, we had had opportunities to study the phenomenon scientifically by trying to set up the environment where UFOs would come. And that would be by baiting them by the movement of nuclear weaponry. And uh, if that's true, that's pretty astounding. It does show a correlation with our nuclear weapons. I mean, look, maybe this planet is really fucking cool and we're kind of like a lower primate species and we're fucking it up. And so they're like, you know, let's watch these fuckers before they blast something. Right. I, I mean, I, I I would guess and totally uneducated. Me too. That that all of the uh, just call them entities, yeah. energies, like that. There, there's that we are just fascinating. Oh, we have to we're, be. We're entertainment for them. Hell yeah. Do you like shopping on Amazon? I do. And good news is, Stevo's butt wipes for your butthole are available on Amazon. And if you want a real bundle of a deal, you can get Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole, plus Stevo's butthole destroyer, and Stevo's butt wipes for your butthole. It's the butthole bundle available on Amazon right now. Yeah, dude.